That's a very cute object, isn't it? This is actually a baby unicorn. Look, there's a little horn on top. But it's soft plush, very sweet. I don't know about purple tail, but <laughs> it's a bit of fun. Very friendly looking creature too. Are they always friendly, unicorns? Well, this is one of these feisty pets they're called, a new American invention. Just by squeezing the cheeks, he changes his mood instantly and dramatically. Oh, wow, suddenly a snarling creature, dangerous too, angry. Teaches children all about mood changes, I suppose. So all it is, is just the two eyebrows coming together in the mouth opening with the teeth. Oh, my goodness, what a change of expression that is. Quite astonishing. So friendly and so fierce. Wow. Very, very clever bit of artwork there. I love it. So I found this at the New York Toy Fair about two years ago and finally got a sample of it. There's a whole range of them, different sizes as well, but I'm just bowled over by the simplicity of the expression and to make it change so much. And here's some of the other objects which I found both at the New York Toy Fair and also some of the shops I look around as well. Some of them are a bit slight, I recall them, but quite fun too. This one, for instance, um, I like it's a finger fiddle. You're supposed to fiddle, 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 because then the middle bit turns around. But if you hold it like this, you can make that central bit turn around like that. But more dramatically, if you hold the two corners of the blue, you can make it spin like that, which is very pretty. I love that. Very nice effect. They're suggesting you can make it spin like a top, but it hasn't got quite enough inertia, I don't think. I've tried it and it just falls over. But nice concept and a nice fiddly, fiddly, fiddly toy. There's lots of those coming out. There's one or two more here as well. This is a very slight toy, but it's a very sweet one because the people who were making it had a whole range of these on a big slope. All this is is a ball bearing inside, quite a heavy ball bearing. And this is made of cardboard. You assemble this yourself. And then you have a whole army moving down the table with a slope to the table. And it's very sweet and they dance as well. So, so quite a sweet little item for one of the people I know at the New York Toy Fair. And another slight one was almost just thrown into my pocket, I think, because these things here, look. This is actually a perfect example of Velcro, look. It's that little burr type thing you have out in the countryside in summertime, little tiny hooks, and they hook onto each other. Velcro itself has got little little hooks and little little loops as well, but this is hooks only. And it's just something for the kids to play with and feel as though they've got something in their hand, which is interesting. A friend, Dick Esterly, I've known for many years, made a very charming thing called Icosa, he calls it, which is all geometry, etc. And the idea is to fiddle around until you get um, about three, three tasks he sets you. I think this is one of them, where all the three red balls are together and all the black balls and all the blue and all the yellow and, and the blue. And then you can bottle it up like that and the centre bit you find is just a little square of plastic and these are just elasticated. They're in pairs and they're elasticated. But you can get them as a lovely muddle, fiddle around and if you're minded to, look at the instructions and find some other little tasks to set. So a finger fiddle, a bit of maths in it as well, and a bit of fun, it's a kind of puzzle as well. Nice one. Here's a much more sophisticated puzzle from Doug Engel. He makes wonderful stuff, this guy. Very, very clever inventor. I took that off to start with to show what's going on. This turns around rather like a smoke ring. It turns around like that, and now we've got those are all gold, and then comes back again, it becomes all silver. What happens to the rings? Do they turn around as well? Well, curious enough, they don't turn around. That's an extraordinary thing. If I put this little peg here just to identify one of the pieces, that one there, and then we turn it this way like this, you'll find what happens is it just comes into the centre. It doesn't turn around. It can't, in fact. There isn't enough room for it to do so. It just turns into the centre like that. Or if you change these ones here, it'll do something else. and It'll finish here somewhere in the middle there too. So a very, very charming finger fiddle as well, but it's got some wonderful geometry to it because those rings are not doing what they seem to be doing. They seem to be rotating around and around like a smoke ring, but they don't. These pieces do completely turn around 360 degrees, but not the, not the rings. They're just going in, out, in, out. Very, very subtle, very clever. I found another company doing zips, zip bags. I love these. I've had them for years and years. And this intrigued me because it was a slightly different form of construction. The way he's ended it there is not the same as the other zip bags I've got. So I had a good play with this. And I think I might get back to, to visit him next year at the New York Toy Fair and see if we can have a bit of fun trying to remediate some of the white AK zips, which are, I think are my favorite ones, makes different shapes. But this is a standard one, but it's just got that nice little touch to it that it's, um, Makes a complete zip bag, isn't it? Astonishing, isn't it? Makes a complete zip bag, and yet the end pieces, so how he finishes it, is just a little bit different from all the other bags I've got. One more turn, 180 degrees, and there's the bag, put things in it, and you can zip it up and close it. 
and you've got a nice sealed bag. Lovely idea. Very nicely done too. And it's also a nice one, this one, because it's got absolutely no apertures in it. So anything inside is kept inside and wouldn't, wouldn't break. And to unzip it, you can really take one end like this, turn it through 180 degrees, and then go boom, 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 and pull it, 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 and pull it. Wow. Could be a skipping rope now, wouldn't it? Lovely idea, that. <laughs> Here's something strange I found, not at the toy fair, but at um, MoMA. I always love visiting the uh, MoMA shop. There's one downtown and there's one midtown. This is an extraordinary German thing. It's made of metal. And it's got a sort of, uh, originally completely flat, completely flat. But the idea is to actually make things from it, bowls. So if I put it into this as a former and then put it down, I should be able to get a sort of bowl shaped thing. Can you see all the pieces are slowly spreading out a little bit like that. And then eventually you get a nice concavity in it. And with that, you can actually use it for, I don't know, nuts or put jewelry there or something like that, crisp or something like that. Instantly makes a bowl. And I suppose you could flatten it again and start again with some of those things, but it's just a, something you can manipulate with the hands and you can make household objects from it. So a very strange idea from MoMA, and I like it because it's something completely original. I've never seen it before. <laughs> I met up with my friend Rufus Butler Seder, who I've known for many years, and he had a lovely thing here to show me, something similar I've had before, but these are called Kineti Spindle, K K Kineti cards. And they've got two layers to them, but this particular version is made is more colourful than any others I've ever seen before. So when I so if I can get my hand in here and open and close it, now I have to go back and forward like that, and you get animation. Look at that, a horse galloping. But it's all in colour, which is I love. The original cards he made were just black and white, a bit stark, but the full colour is superb. It's just the slightest movement of the top layer, which has got a series of little parallel lines like Mori patterns. And the effect is animation. There's about six movements of the horse. And here's one which is firework displays. This is a nice one. Fireworks and all those colours coming off like that. And his favourite scene, which he's done so many times, and the very first one when I first met him, was of a leaping cat. And he does that superbly. The cat leaping back and forward like that. It's just so well done. So these are little miniature versions of his kinetic cards, which I think are superb. I'm so pleased to have those because I think out of the many things he's made, that's probably my favourite item. Then we've got an extraordinary thing here, which I've been waiting for for three years, this thing, and it's finally come out. Wow. They call it Bugle Dance or something. You have to, put, you have to plug it in and get it all charged up, which I've done. It's two dice. Now, to make dice work, what would you normally do? You put them into a dice cup like that and you, you know, that's the usual thing. Oh, look, there's a help. Well, the idea is you're supposed to bang them like that to make them become alive. And then you're supposed to click your fingers, if it works. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Self dancing dice or self. No, that doesn't work. It has to be done with clicks of the fingers. Well, that one does as well. So, this is an extraordinary device. It's finally been finished after two years' development, and the idea is to do a, a, a whole raft of, of games with these. The app has about 20 or more different games, which you can do with these dice and not with ordinary dice. So away goes the old, um, the old dice shaker, and come back with something quite new and quite different to anything else you've ever seen before. <laughs> what an idea. Absolutely superb. Now I've seen everything, I feel. Well, not quite everything, because there's one more thing to show you here. This is um, my friend Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer. This is Rudolph flying, would you believe? Let's see if we can make him work. Wait a minute. Oh! Oh, 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 my goodness me. Now I've seen everything. I should remind you, incidentally, there's only a few hundred shopping days to Christmas. Ah, let's have another go. This is so good. Turn it on. He flaps. He waits. And now he goes off. Oh. And that was my trip to New York. Wasn't it fun?